Hello and welcome to Witchy Wellness Radio. I'm your host, Lauren Chalantani, women's holistic health coach and fellow recovering perfectionist. This podcast was created to show you that your body is not in the way, it is actually leading your way. Hello, everybody. Welcome back to Witchy Wellness Radio, and you are listening to episode 76, Soul Work Leadership with Adi Shakti. And today's episode is brought to you by Living the Good Life Naturally. This is a beautiful, all-natural magnesium and self-care product line that I a thousand percent back. I've had the founder and beautiful soul, Kristen Bowen, on episode 73, that's 73, Maximizing Your Health with Magnesium. So if you're interested in learning more, click on the link for that episode or head on over to their website and make sure you use code WICHY, W-I-C-T-H-Y, for 10% off your offer. So today's show, the beautiful Adi Shakti, we talk all about yoga and leadership and how there's this beautiful tie between soulful entrepreneurship and sacred activism Adi is so called to help other people show up in their own lives, but also be a leader for other people who need it. And why spiritual inquiry is a foundation of worldly success and impact. I love combining these two. I think it is clear in the world today, we need more soul-filled leaders who are actually on the front lines with this foundation of who we really are. When we can show up with a full cup, with a full heart, and a grounded perspective, the world's going to change. We also talk about yoga autonomy and the power of practice to heal emotional wounds or trauma, the future of the yoga industry, taking yoga beyond the movement practice and into social organization and nonprofit work. Lastly, we talk about how spiritual leaders who are passionate about social justice, how she helps them fine-tune their skills of facilitation so that they can better serve vulnerable communities with integrity and with impact. I am so excited for you guys to listen to the show today, Soul Work Leadership with the beautiful Adi Shakti. Please enjoy. Hello, hello, everybody. I am your host, Lauren, and you are listening to Witchy Wellness Radio, the show you get to learn that your body's not in your way, but actually actually leading your way. And today we have the beautiful guest, Adi Shakti. She is the founder of Soul Work, an online educational platform for holistic health practitioners. And she specializes in philosophy of freedom, offering yogic teachings and lifestyle design education. Her own life is based out of an experimental yogic living permaculture center, that sounds amazing, on the Caribbean coast of Costa Rica. She has trained hundreds of yoga teachers and 200 and 300 hour prenatal and trauma informed focused areas. She also has led international programs across the globe, including Thailand, Cambodia, India, Guatemala, and Ecuador. Woo! That sounds amazing. Welcome to the show, Adi. Well, thank you so much for having me, Lauren, and everyone listening. I'm so thankful to have your, your presence and your time, and I'm really thankful to be here with you all today. So thank you for having me. Oh, you're so welcome. I love having fellow yogis and yoginis on here to just talk all things yoga and philosophy. And, you know, yoga is so much more than just that movement, you know, just one limb of the yogic wheel. I'm, people don't realize that and it's so healing for so many people in their in their own way from you know whatever background you come from it's so amazing to to meet people from all over the world who have fallen in love with this practice and I would love I'm sure the listeners would love to hear how you got into yoga to now being this like amazing beautiful yoga goddess teaching the world (laughs) you know how to, to teach yoga and and practice yoga. Yeah. Well, I um, was born and raised in the Midwest, um, in Indianapolis, and I was born actually um, on the Northwest side of Indianapolis. And growing up, I went to black schools. 
And so I am so thankful for that background because I didn't realize at the time even that that was, you know, a unique experience. Um, but it really started to shape my worldview and my passion um, later in life for social justice. Um, because I was exposed to so much diversity growing up, I feel that I was really gifted um, with, the, with being a, a bridge um, and being able to connect with such a wide range of people. Um, and just this, I was pulled towards social justice from a very, very young age. And so I, you know, went to middle school, high school, um, and then finally, you know, was in college in Chicago and was working with um, an organization called Lift Chicago, actually, um, and would be in prisons and at women's safe houses and really um, diving into what it meant for me to use my body, my voice, my personal power as a tool for positive social change. Um, and so that is really my, my core inquiry of this life, I feel, is, is really channeling my potential in um, seeing how it is that I can soften the, the suffering of others. And of course, knowing that that, for me, gives my life purpose and, um, and beauty. Um, and so with that background in social justice is really when um, you know, I started my search for um, God, really. And, and it was through people, it was through service. Um, and in school, I actually studied the philosophy. I have a bachelor's in philosophy. And this was, of course, mostly the Western thinkers and just was really on this hungry quest for, um, yeah, for what it meant to live my life in alignment, on purpose, um, to, you know, live my life with, with value. And so I found the yoga philosophy um, my freshman year of college while I was simultaneously studying, um, you know, these great Western thinkers um, and started my yoga journey becoming a teacher my, my senior year. Um, so I finished with school and I had, you know, this background in philosophy, this background in social justice and then studied at this very, very classical traditional um, yoga ashram there in Chicago. Um, and became increasingly curious about the relationship between the yoga philosophy, the yoga community, and kind of this next era of the yoga industry and how social justice and inclusivity and diversity and these values and things that have been so important to me, how it is to kind of weave these two um, together. Because, you know, being a yoga teacher now is such an exciting time because it's, it's mainstream you know, and so people are already coming to the practice, they're exploring it in their bodies and people now, you know, we're looking at practitioners that have been studying, you know, five, 10, 15, 20 years um, that are curious for kind of what is next. And so these elements of, um, you know, channeling our yoga communities, um, almost in the way that we've seen like churches organized for different causes and things like that, but we're kind of seeing this new age um, non-denominational group of people with influence um, that are curious about these concepts of union and this deeper philosophy. And it's such a potent um, community um, for, yeah, for social change, for people to organize around entrepreneurship and new kinds of businesses and, you know, getting these ideas out in the world in a way that's um, much easier now than it was even five, 10 years ago. You know, like those of you listening to this podcast and you, Lauren, and, and being able to express in the way that you are and, and me and us as women, you know, being able to step into business in this new way is um, really, really powerful and beautiful in, in terms of kind of starting to change the mindset as we step forward into this new era. Um, and so after college, I went to Costa Rica, I moved to Costa Rica. I was there for a year working with a rural community there, um, a nonprofit organization, you know, teaching English and, and different things like that. Um, and then I started working with the Village Experience, um, which is an organization based here in Indianapolis, actually. Um, and we did humanitarian global travel. So we would source groups that would raise substantial amounts of money for different projects globally. And then I would actually take those groups there. And so I spent the early part of my 20s, you know, traveling to Bangkok, Phnom Penh, Delhi, Guatemala City, um, Lima, um, you know, all over the place, San Jose, and then all over the United States as well, doing these conferences. It was kind of simultaneously immersing myself 
um, in these beautiful global communities, these smaller, uh, mostly indigenous communities that we would go and, and visit and serve. And there's ethics around that that you know I've, I've worked with um, as I've gotten older. Um, but then also, you know, being in this environment of you know speaking and um, and, and recruiting groups and sales and all these different kinds of things, you know, plus the yoga element. And so that was, you know, my lifestyle for a couple of years and then decided that I wanted to start my own company. And I got super burnt out of the global lifestyle. You know, I was accumulating, you know, what I'm understanding now is um, trauma from being expo exposed to um, such horrific truths, you know, working with human trafficking survivors in Calcutta, um, or, you know, groups of, um, you know, just people all over the world that were, were suffering profoundly. And I was having these confusing feelings of really feeling um, overwhelmed and like I was accumulating a trauma, having um, shame around that because it feels petty, you know, to sit there with a group of girls that have been raped 30 times a day and then I'm going home and throwing myself up to sleep and, you know, my pain can't begin to compare to their pain and all of these kind of really, really complicated ethical um, elements and wanting to be of service, but also kind of feeling myself shutting down and not necessarily at that point in my life having the tools to resource and all these different things. And so I decided that I wanted to start a company where I could provide an experience and training for people that were curious about this work to gain the skills to then go into their own communities um, and be able to initiate um, powerful change, you know, within their own communities through their own businesses. Um, and so in 2014, we founded Soul Work. It was then called Passion Yoga School. Um, and over the years now it's developed into, you know, we have a, a permaculture farm with, um, we can hold, hold 28 people there with container housing and compost toilets and really living the yoga from that environmental perspective and hosting people from all around the world um, to come to our trainings, you know, the 200 hour, the 300 hour um, prenatal trauma informed and different retreats and things that we do, um, but really providing a, a framework um, for leadership. And ultimately, it's not just about, you know, teaching people how to touch their toes, but what does it actually mean for people to come together in community and wrestle with these ethics? And especially now, you know, with the Black Lives Matter movement and all of these things that we, this, this time that we find ourselves in, it's necessary um, and urgent even that we um, gift ourselves and outfit ourselves with the skills that we need in leadership to ultimately um, be of highest service, you know, to vulnerable communities and, and other groups. So... Yeah, so I guess that's kind of the, the story. Um, and um, yeah, so that's kind of where we are now. And then, you know, we've had COVID, so now we've taken everything online and kind of everything's on hold right now. Um, but, but, you know, that's kind of where we are now is, is focusing on, on outfitting leaders um, to be, you know, of higher service uh, in their communities. So beautiful. I, I just love listening to my guest stories and how, how life unfolds you know, and as if you just follow your passion and really tune in and listen, and I l love and I can relate to what you were saying about, um, I, I won't say shaming or shooting on yourself for those emotions or that trauma. And it, you know, it's almost like a, who am I to feel this way? And I think so many of us, especially, you know, you work with soulful entrepreneurship and entre entrepreneurs, and so many of us just want to help other people, but then you get into that almost stalemate of like your own head of, well, you know, who am I to have, a, you know, this privileged life, if you will, to help X, Y, Z. And so many of us deal with this every day, whether you want to go on entrepreneurship or not. And I wanted to, to dive deeper into that aspect of, of your teachings and how you show up for the world in this relationship between the soulful entrepreneurship and sacred activism? And, mm -hmm. you know, why is the spiritual inquiry the foundation of, you know, worldly success and impact? And I think, I know that's what we all need to do for the world right now. If we all could just in our own way, show up like that, whew, it would be a different place. <laughs> mm -hmm. Absolutely, yeah. So. You know, that's, that, those are the founding, um, you know, the pillars of our organization is this um, understanding that it starts with the soul, right, and then moves to the work. 
And so we have this history um, of fights for social justice and social change um, that are kind of grounded in brokenness um, and a rejection of the other um, that leads to this, you know, polarity and conflict. And we're seeing that right now, especially in our politics of, you know, people, it's like, as soon as you sense that someone disagrees with you, um, you either stop talking about it or kind of brace yourself for like a vicious experience. Like we've forgotten um, how to actually dialogue with each other, you know? Um, and so it's really important that you know, if we're wanting to step forward as, you know, and we're talking about the evolution of the human being, right? And that ultimately, you know, that is what we're talking about with the yoga philosophy and the meditation and the, um, all of these different things where we're working on expanding our consciousness on kind of moving into what it is that this new human um, looks like. And the foundations are in healing trauma and understanding our behavioral patterns and taking responsibility for our emotions and, and understanding the patterns in our, um, in our lives and, and how and why they show up. And if we're having rage, where that comes from, right? And so having the space and time to do that inner work of self-inquiry and actually looking at our lives and looking at ourselves you know, to, to come from that place of intimacy um, with self is what is actually going to support us in establishing intimacy with the other and being able to start to chip at, you know, these age old um, issues, you know, that we're finding it's finally time for us to confront these things. Um, and so, you know, starting with that uh, work around healing and then from there, figuring out how to come together and actually channel that newly released, you know, inspiration and energy into some sort of um, project or business or really just into a life that is actually in alignment with what it is that we want, you know, because so oftentimes I am with people and, and people that come to me or people that I'm with, you know, they feel frozen by their trauma. And, and a lot of times they don't even recognize that that's what's happening, you know, um, but the heartbreak, the abuse, the um, and all of these things as well in our culture are very taboo. You know, it's not necessarily encouraged to talk about these kinds of things. Um, and so just the act of having a safe place for people to come and explore themselves authentically is radical, you know, and, and that becomes the foundation um, for how it is that we're able to, to move forward, you know, with, with integrity, um, authenticity, and, you know, with truth. Um, because otherwise it just becomes kind of a, you know, fixing the other um, in an attempt to, to fix the self, you know, and, and we kind of, it, it, it's time to start to switch that framework a bit, I think. Oh, 100%. And I think, I love how you, I mean, everybody, especially right now, can relate to that politics example. Mm -hmm. And it just perpetuates and doesn't help that there's two main parties either. Uh, this duality you know, the self and the other, like you were just talking about, but really, we're, it's all one. Mm -hmm. It's all one. And so beautifully said how you stated, you know, start with the self first, mm -hmm. and then you can grow that love into the world. And I know for me, yoga itself, the physical practice has been so powerful. And people don't realize, yes, it's a good workout. Yes, you, you, you know, your body will shift and change and you will grow stronger. You might shed weight or, but you will shed emotions too. And there have been practices where I have started to cry, where I've felt like all of a sudden out of nowhere, I had a panic attack, or sometimes I've felt like laughing. Mm -hmm. And, you know, this relationship between yoga anatomy and these poses and movement to really, it's self-healing. You know, people don't realize the power of this to help practice, this practice to heal emotional wounds and the trauma. I would love to hear more. I mean, I always love learning about this, but more about your take on this and, you know, you know, maybe how some tips or um, poses or practices that maybe people, you can help people right now, especially during this dualistic election time, if you will, and the year of 2020, I mean. <laughs> Crazy. I think that what 
is really um, valuable for people to understand, especially if they're new to the practice or have even been in the practice for a while. Um, I think a really helpful kind of map for looking at this and understanding the impact that it has on us is seeing it through the lens of the nervous system. Um, because we are in a state now, uh, unlike um, any other time in history, with the amount of um, stimulus that we have constantly, right? From our phones, to our emails, to the TV, expectations with um, social commitments, this glorification of busy, it's just, it's completely overwhelming. Um, and even, you know, you look back to when we grew up and we're in elementary school or whatever, like we didn't have this level of pressure to constantly stay connected, right? It's a very, very new thing in history. But when we look back at, you know, let's say a few hundred years ago, or when we're, you know, hunters and gatherers are in more of a, a tribal state, you know, we would have some sort of trigger or threat to our safety you know, maybe a few times a day, right, or something. Um, and we would have the, we had the wisdom, the primal wisdom to be able to process through this trauma, right? So, you know, we see a bear and we run from the bear and we have this, you know, the, the flight response and our nervous system goes through its natural primal expression of dealing with this trauma. And then it's able to release and we're able to come back into baseline. But what we're seeing now is that we are constantly triggered, constantly triggered and encouraged through social conditioning to freeze. So we have heartache, we have, you know, comparison, this, this trauma of, you know, these images that we're drinking in constantly, constantly having access to all of the, the trauma of the world. You know, that's not something that was real a hundred years ago. I mean, you had to wait for a horse to come into town to tell you about what happened two doors you know, down or whatever it was, or two towns down. Now it's just, we're constantly hit with all of this and it's sitting in our psyche, it's sitting in our emotional system and it's sitting in our nervous system. And so we're seeing our nervous system's wisdom, we're starting to numb out and, or it looks like depression or it looks like in, uh, anxiety, right? Hyperactivity. And so through the yoga practice, you know, we have the nervous system, that's how we talk about it from a Western perspective. But in the Eastern um, anatomy side of things, you know, we call this the chakras, right? And so really the chakras are just a, a hippie way, right, of talking about the nervous system. And so when we're working um, with the, the postures of yoga, the, the, the asana or the postures of yoga are designed to support us in kind of discharging and balancing stored energy um, that may be stagnant in these energy centers or in our nervous system. And so that's why, you know, sometimes we'll be in a, in a shape and we'll start to cry because something that's been pent up, maybe it was from years ago that just hasn't had the opportunity to actually release from our system, you know, resurfaces. And when you get into the science of all of this and um, you know, the molecules of emotion and the hormones as they release in the body um, during these traumatic events, but we're not running anymore. We're not fighting anymore. You know, we're just kind of silencing. And so having this, this practice of movement um, and getting into and stretching different areas of the body and, and deepening into the tissues, um, it's an opportunity for us to bring our nervous systems back to baseline. And so that daily commitment to, you know, Austin and other kinds of movement, you know, work as well, but that maintenance of allowing ourselves to discharge in the system is going to be so important um, because also with the yoga philosophy, you know, we, we learn that the physical dis-ease or physical symptoms that show up in the body have an energetic root, right? So there's some sort of trauma that hits the system that blocks and then over time it's not addressed, it's not released, and then eventually it does manifest as physical disease in the body. So we see that thoughts or emotions or energetic trauma, you know, are the root of so much um, disease. And so if we can on it, you know, take this perspective of um, taking the, the reins on our health and committing to um, coming into some sort of daily practice, it's going to be a way for us to keep ourselves well energetically, emotionally, um, and physically as well. So it's a really, really, really powerful practice for, um, yeah, for our mental health, our emotional health, our spiritual health, and then ultimately, you know, we know, of course, our, our physical health, um, but it's, it's very, very um, deep and, and layered. There's so much wisdom there, yeah. Oh, yeah. I 
I love a good yoga cry class. You know, it hits you when you least expect it, but man, is that therapeutic. I, and I have, I have to admit, you know, my theme this year is like from trying to get my home practice up and go running and it's been a struggle and you know, X, Y, Z excuses, but at the end of the day, you can feel your body, your nervous system, your emotional, spiritual body. Oof. It's all sorts of contorted and tight and whatever. And for me, it's like, I don't want to shit all over myself. I should do this. I should, you know, do, do more of that. It's really like taking that divine responsibility for yourself, mm -hmm. mind, body, and soul. And that's what you are all about, which is I love your, your philosophy and take on all of this and incorporating that into self-work, self-healing, and also helping the world is how can I show up for myself? And if you want to change the world, start with yourself first, 100%. And that it's probably the, you know, I, I, th I don't even know how long my, I've been practicing my yoga practice. Let's say, let's say about 10 years. That was the biggest thing I've learned is change the world, change yourself through yoga and just that self-healing work that, that, that comes along with this. And since those 10 years, the industry has really changed, really changed. Um, you know, I see local mom and pop shops even now having to go online that have only been in studios this past year. And I feel like you guys have been kind of with your company ahead of that movement or alongside with it. You know, I would love to talk more about the future of the yoga industry, you know, not only just going online, but you, we've touched on it throughout here is talking beyond that movement and that healing practice and how can we transition this in a practical way throughout the world into a social organization and nonprofit work as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I think that, you know, when we come onto the yoga mat physically, what the, the profound work comes in that we are witnessing ourselves right so in that hour that we're on the mat in that 30 minutes hour and a half however long we're, we're on our mat we're watching how it is that we move how it is that we breathe we're building intimacy with our body with our emotional system and that ultimately starts to translate into the rest of our lives right this this getting curious about our uh, mental patterns our emotional patterns how we relate to others and so I feel that, you know, with the, the yoga industry, um, the emphasis in the last, you know, you look at yoga journal, you know, for the past 10, 15 years, whatever it is, has been very much so focusing on um, this, this physical layer. And so we're seeing now that people are getting more and more interested in, you know, these deeper layers of what is possible, you know, around, um, and even, you know, corporations, um, integrating meditation into the the work day and all of these different things that we're starting to see that these this value being put on mindfulness and so something that's very exciting actually that's shifted you know is people being passionate about um you know the evolution of of, of themselves the evolution of the human being and in that inevitably comes a deeper compassion and empathy and care um for the other right um, and so something that's been really beautiful about us switching online, you know, at first I was terrified because, you know, the, the intimacy, the depth, the, the quality of, of being able to be together, especially in the jungle, you know, is so special. I was really nervous about being able to um, replicate that online. But something that's really powerful about the online format is that we're able to make things much less expensive. And then also the people that are coming to our programs are so much more diverse. You know, we can have people from all around the world. We can have faculty from all around the world. And so we're seeing this beautiful surge in deeper conversations happening and a new kind of union that's happening, even though it's not necessarily, you know, in the physical space. And so we're having people connect um, from all around the world that are having these conversations around what it is that they're wanting to build, what it is that we're, they're wanting to create. 
And ultimately, you know, maybe we'll be in this online space for the rest of our, our lifetime. But kind of what I'm hoping is that, you know, we're kind of in this, this phase now of all coming together and building these relationships in this way. And that after we kind of come out of this um, pandemic era, um, that we'll have an even stronger global community of people that have been connecting and sharing ideas, um, you know, even though it's kind of been out of necessity, but I really, I really see um, the power of loving, kind people that are wanting to see more um, compassion and not only on, you know, that side of things, the heart side of things, but also people that are very mentally strong that are wanting to, to organize in their communities or put together nonprofits, build businesses um, that will be more resourced um, and more educated in more of a global worldview um, to be able to kind of step into this new era in our businesses and our lives and the way that we serve others with more um, experience and, and integrity. Amen. I think, <laughs> I think that is what the world needs right now. I feel so aligned with that. And I, I see like, you know, the bigger name yoga teachers stepping out more and more. You talked about yoga journal. I think of Sean Korn. She's always been very active in her own, you know, in her own way in different platforms. Um, but it comes from the individual level. And I think, you know, this, we are all learning. We are all adapting exponentially this year. And any which way my partner and I we always talk about if you haven't grown in at least one area of your life or changed something this year something's wrong like life has forced has forced you to show up in a different a new way but like you said we're being called in this new evolution of human of being human and not a, a de-evolution as some of us feel like but it's through these practices like yoga, through connecting like programs that your, your company soul work offers that allows us to further this evolution. And for me, it's so exciting. You know, we, you know, people might always have wanted to work from home or whatever. And this year, look, in a weird about way, the universe has brought you work from home. You know, you don't have to leave. And looking at these silver linings that we can change and adapt and, and look in our own lives, what, you know, why, why am I here now? What, how can I grow in my own way? And how can I share that growth with others in my own community? Love, 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 love what you guys are all about. I want to hear more about, um, you know, your online programs, but also eventually, you know, maybe even your 2021 200, 300 hour programs and all those other specialty areas and your new Spanish, completely in Spanish training too. That is amazing. Yeah, we're really exciting. So we're opening to the Spanish market. Um, we're doing a Spanish prenatal. It's our first soul work Spanish program um, right now. And it's, and it's so beautiful. Um, but yeah, next year we will be offering both English and Spanish um, 200 hours. We'll be doing trauma informed uh, 300 hour um, and then the prenatal training will also likely to be doing um, a children's training towards the end of next year. Um, so these are all the 2021 offerings. And so we will just be online. We may do some impromptu retreats and things that I'm, I'm dabbling with through 2021. But then the hope is that for 2022, we'll be back um, to our, our live trainings. We will be actually doing a live training in Indianapolis in July. Um, it's a 200 hour, three week long program super affordable which is awesome because we're just we have the space at soul work headquarters that people can come to and then stay where they like and get their meals where they like um but yeah but once we get back to costa rica it's the ashram life um those programs are you know up to four thousand dollars for a 200 hour five thousand dollars for the 300 hours so they are um incredible investments you know you're there for a month all of your meals all of your housing your faculty all of that um, and so it makes sense that they are so expensive um, but the beautiful thing about 2021 and this upcoming year is that we're able to offer you know scholarships we're able to welcome people into our programs for five hundred dollars you know um because we don't have the costs that are affiliated with these live trainings and so and also it's a temporary permission right so the yoga alliance just gave us permission through the end of next year to do this 
um, online format. And so we're just trying to serve as many people as we can, especially at these discounted rates, you know, through the end of next year. And then it is likely that 2022 will be back to our, um, to our ashram. I hope so. <laughs> I miss it very much. Oh, that sounds so wonderful right now. I just gotta say like, <sighs> Costa Rica is beautiful to begin with, but that, that whole setup, I'm ready to go. Um, <laughs> um, so I've done my teacher training and I don't necessarily teach yoga, but I have found it was well worth it. For people who maybe are new to yoga or more seasoned yogis that maybe not necessarily thinking about getting their 200 or 300 hour, who is it for? You know, yeah. I think it's for everybody, but I would love to hear what you have to say about it. So especially for people that are not necessarily wanting to teach, I highly recommend signing up for these programs in 2021 because they are, you know, much, much cheaper. If you are going to invest four or $5,000, you know, most people with that investment are hoping to see a return on that, right? So that you're learning the skill and then out teaching it in the world. So, um, it's really um, beautiful opportunity. A lot of people come into our, especially our online programs without the intention of necessarily teaching, but to receive those, um, those deeper lectures that are organized and you're held accountable, you know, through philosophy, business, all these different things. Um, we also have the, the Soul Work Academy online, um, which is $9 a month. And it's basically just a library of dozens and dozens of lectures on philosophy, on lifestyle, on um, conscious business growth, um, the posture breakdowns, all those different kinds of things. So for people that are wanting to kind of have a resource to take things deeper, but don't necessarily want to become a teacher, that can be great, but there's not that structure, you know, um, like you have with a, with a training program. Um, but yeah, but the people that are, you know, coming that are wanting to be teachers, a lot of, you know, the people that are called to us are passionate about social justice. You know, they're passionate about their potential. They're wanting clarity on their purpose. They feel this deep desire to serve internally and just aren't quite clear or don't quite have the community uh, or the mentorship that, that they haven't found it just yet to actually be able to channel that inner passion into, you know, an actual sustainable project outside of them. You know, so many people that come to our trainings, they leave and they start um, yoga studios or start retreat businesses. Um, start online classes and workshops and all these different things. Um, and so we really, I really take pride in, in seeing like a lot of these people out there in the space that are killing it. You know, a lot of them are um, either studied with us or have collaborated with us. Um, and I really just take pride in, in our company kind of being this uh, mecca for badass women entrepreneurs that are wanting um, sacred community um, you know, to come together and be playful, be silly, be real, um, but also, you know, get into the discipline um, at when it's time to, to go there as well, you know, um, because I kind of see that it's like sometimes um, it, it's difficult to find and, and really why I created the company. Um, it's difficult to find uh, organizations with depth and lineage um, that are also talking about these elements of entrepreneurship and you know, liberation through sexuality and all of these different things. Um, so we really kind of touch on, on a lot and we have a lot of fun in the process. So, yeah. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. Well, I am always amazed how fast our interviews go. Was there anything else? We covered a lot today. Was there anything else you wanted to cover or wrap up before we close the show out today? No, I just want to, again, thank everybody for listening. And especially, you know, if you're this deep into the interview, I know there are <laughs> Are, are in line um, and it would be you know my honor to continue to, to cultivate a, a relationship with you and, and and Lauren I've had such a good time getting to chat with you today and I'm just really um, yeah really thankful to be here and to, and to offer my my crazy ideas out into the <laughs> out into the world it means so much to me you're very welcome very welcome I am grateful for you being on the show as well and we close out every show thanking our guests for not only showing up for yourself, for showing up for the entire world and us today. And how may we, the listeners, be of active service for you as an act of gratitude in return today? So if you go to soulwork.com, there is a free course there for you. Um, it's the 
five things that you need to know to be of service to others. Um, so it's a short little video series that just pulls from my experience in international work and humanitarian work, and as well as you know actually working with hundreds of people through their trauma and healing process, um, and just the insights that I've you know picked up along the way. And I, yeah, that little video series you can go there and check that out. Um, and it's a great free resource that I just felt like it was important to channel my experience to offer to others, especially those of you that are already, you know, holding space for others or wanting to get into that that work of supporting others in their healing. It would mean a lot to me if you could just give that give that a watch and and see um, maybe how it can support you. So, yeah, that's, that is, sounds very magical. Um, thank you again for coming on the show today, Adi. I had such a wonderful time and I love just listening and sharing and preaching all types of yogic philosophy. So thank you. And remember, open up, surrender, trust, and let your body lead the way.